a man with 30 years of global experience in the medical field, a lecturer and more recently in AI in medicine and of course uh, the boss of the Al Shark Hospital Group here in the UAE. No stranger to the sofa, back with us here uh, on DXB today, it is Brian De Francesco. great to have you back with us. Thank you much, so much, David. And now obviously one of the tenets of any society is access to healthcare. Uh, we know that the digital revolution is going on across industries around the world at the moment. We know it's impacting medicine, but is, is digital health, is the digitization of health making it easier to access healthcare? It is making it easier in the future. It will make it a lot more easier. Yeah. Uh, uh, dig digital tools, AI, uh, telemedicine, proven, proven to work. Uh, however, the challenges in the adoption of AI is uh, these tools need to be approved by regulators. Hmm. That takes time. Uh, they need to be reimbursed for by the insurance companies, which also takes time. And then they need to be integrated with current healthcare systems that in many cases may be 10, 20, or 30 years a bit behind. So there's a lot of issues with what's referred to as interoperability, getting these new tools to, to work within these kind of analog systems. So, so when you have the challenges with regulations, reimbursement, and then actually plugging them into a healthcare system, uh, once we start to get over these things, it, it will be far more than it is today. Mm. It's estimated that over the past uh, 10 years, over $100 billion has been invested in digital health in the US alone, with very little return on investment. Mm. That doesn't mean there's not value there. It just means that there's all these great tools. In 1879, and Thomas Edison shows up with a light bulb. There was not widespread commercial use of electricity for another 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's going to happen, and it is happening, <laughs> but we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg yet. Not even scratched the surface no, yet. No, not at all. Yeah. It's the long game, isn't it? We're, Very we're much holding so. out, Very holding much out so. for it. I want to dig a bit deeper into actually the process of seeking um, healthcare. So for example, if I was to go to a doctor, um, how has AI, I guess, innovation of the technology really helped that process for diagnosing quicker, you know, get, getting to the bottom of it a lot quicker? Has that been uh, quite revolutionary in, in the current stage of the process? It's interesting even the in the aspects of digitalization and AI that you, you, you go right to the clinical part and right to the diagnosis part because this is the area that everyone's talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's so much more, not the diagnostic part of what, which is very important, but one of the greatest challenges we have is how we communicate with mm -hmm. patients. You know, you know, today my mother-in-law is having surgery and even how she was communicated about when to show up with the surgery and then what's going to be done. You know, all that communication normally takes hospital staff time, which costs money, so it tends to not happen as frequently as it should be. And then there's the post-surgery follow-up. There should be a call from someone. So there's all these other parts that AI can support and do very, very well that currently is a great area for improvement that's not even related to the diagnosis. And then certainly in the entire diagnostic process, uh, you know, computer vision you know, can work with whether it's a CT scan or uh, pathology slides. Uh, but with going back to what we said earlier, all of that needs to be approved by regulators, needs to be reimbursed by the insurance companies and needs to then be integrated into the current system. So for more than five years, uh, AI has been able to report very well on diagnostic imaging. And you have you know, AI gods like uh, Jeffrey Hinton saying, don't train any more radiologists. However, if you go to pretty much every hospital here, all your reporting is being done by humans and should be for quite a long time. Mm. Uh, so technologies like the light bulb in 1879, mm. that's where we are with a lot of AI that does work. It is proven, but it's going to take several years for it to really start to, to feel the impact. So Brian, like anything, obviously there's going to be concerns. So what are the ethical concerns when it comes to AI healthcare, especially like with patient data? Uh, there, there are many very justified concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from the, the, the data set that the AI models are originally trained on. Uh, the, the majority of the data is you know, from the US or from Europe. Uh, so trained on uh, a lot of primarily European or American white males, so to speak. And then when you come into either the Middle East or the countries of Africa, 
and you're using AI models that are biased towards a certain ethnic group, uh, that has problems right there in, uh, in ethics and in, in, even in, in eff efficacy. Uh, then there's all the data privacy that is not just limited to AI, but just digitalization in general. So there's, there's uh, you know, keeping, keeping your information confidential. And this is becoming, an, as we go more and more digital, a, a very real concern. And now everyone's starting to hear the buzz about quantum computers coming online in the next you know, decade or so, or, or five years, that will be able theoretically to crack anything. So uh, uh, yeah, very real ethical and uh, confidentiality concerns. Uh, I would like to say that there's a, a, a solution that we have at hand right now. Uh, privacy in all areas, not just in healthcare, is a, a serious. But we know that, 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 that Dubai, that this region as a whole has been ahead of the curve when it comes yes. to digitization and the uh, application of innovation uh, and, and new technologies. But given your global experience and given your better understanding of healthcare the world over as well, is there potential here? Is this, is, is this, is, could this be a hub for sort of the next wave of medicine moving forward? Is this going to be a very positive place when it comes to the digitization of medicine? Yeah, I think it will be the place. Really? Uh, uh, for, for several reasons. I, I've been here, uh, I came here about 17 years ago with Johns Hopkins yeah. uh, running hospitals. And uh, so I've seen, you know, I've seen what's been happening here at the same time, you know, communicating with friends and colleagues all around the world and knowing, you know, how much they've progressed over the years. Uh, everything from regulation, reimbursement, infrastructure, you know, a minister of AI. I mean, we've taken so many advances, regulations in teleconsulting and, and uh, teleconsultation that, that other countries took a decade and some don't even have in place yet. Yeah. So, so there's the entire infrastructure, and regulatory framework, uh, uh, the leadership vision. You know, so it's got all these other places that the majority of the rest of the world doesn't. Mm -hmm. Now, the only other place that I'm very big on are the countries of Africa, yeah. uh, but for different reasons. Yeah. You know, their, their, their shortage, critical shortage of healthcare workers which we don't have that problem here, but they simply just have a, a critical and chronic shortage of healthcare workers, just out of necessity, they're gonna have to go from zero to AI. Mm -hmm. you know, so, 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 much, so much innovation, uh, adoption, new models will be de developed here. The UAE has a fantastic relationship with the countries of Africa. Yeah. So we're going to see a, a, a lot of that just really building up to some interesting oh, models. Exciting stuff. Wait. Well, Brian, you're going to stay with us through the whole of the episode and give us your fantastic expertise and insight. But now a question for our audience. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have surgery performed by a robot? Well, coming up, we've got an expert in cutting edge medical technology here to reveal the future of healthcare. So stay right there.